Okay, so today's the big day. Woo! We're gonna do a lot. Um, the first kind of problem we're gonna go over is a work problem. In work problems, they tell you one person can do a job in a certain number of hours, another person takes a different number of hours. How long will it take them to do the job working together? It's a very popular kind of problem in algebra. And we talked about how when we were doing work problems before, every work problem has a different pattern. And if you can tell what pattern to use, it's a piece of cake to solve. But if you don't know the pattern, then you're going to be in trouble. This is no different. There's a pattern. We had to wait until now to make sure you could actually solve it once we get the pattern done. So the pattern for this, I'm going to write down here, and then we're going to work it out over there because it's the same pattern every single time. So whenever you see a work problem, it's always x over the first time plus x over the second time equals one job. Okay, and it's a plus because they're working together to do this. So the first time is talking about how long it takes the first person to do it, and the second time is talking about how long it takes the second person to do it. So for this particular problem, since we always use this pattern, I'm going to say John can do the job in seven hours. So John's part is x over seven. Plus, Tim can do the same job in six hours. So Tim's part is going to be x over six. They want to know how long it's going to take them to complete one job. I'll put down my one. Now it's just like a problem we had in our last section where all you have to do is find the common denominator. In this case, the common denominator is 42. That is correct. So I want the bottoms to look like 42. This means it's got to be multiplied by 6 up here. This one has to be multiplied by 7 up here. This one has to be multiplied by 42 because it's 1 on the bottom. Don't have to worry about writing the bottoms anymore. You can just stick with the tops now. So that's going to be 6x plus 7x is equal to 42. 6x plus 7x is 13x is equal to 42. Divide both sides by 13. x is equal to 13 doesn't go into 42 evenly. 13 goes into 52 evenly. Doesn't go into 42 evenly, so I'm going to leave it as 42 over 13 hours, because that's what our unit was. Um, and that's okay to leave it like that. That's what I want. Very quick and easy for me to check it if you left it like that. So, simple problem, not hard at all. Now I have two I want you to try. I'm going to take time to erase these. You look at problem number two and problem number four on page 356. Okay, you do that up next. I'm going to move this up. Don't mind me. We're going two and four. Going to do these in black, okay? Problem number two. 
problem number two. It says, David can unlock a delivery truck in 20 minutes, and Allie can do it in 35 minutes. Sorry, it was unload, not unlock. If they work together, how long will it take? The whole how long will it take is how I know it's a work problem. So, I know it's going to look like this. Then he can do it in 20 minutes. Let's put a little 20 under here. Said that she can do it in 35 minutes. Put a little 35 there. Common denominator. Oof. Not 70. Not 105. 140? Does that go into 140? Yes. 140. Which means this gets multiplied by 7, this gets multiplied by 4, this gets multiplied by 140. So that gives me 7x plus 4x is equal to 140. Seven x and four x is eleven x. Divide both sides by eleven. That don't go evenly. It's more than ten times though. But I'm just gonna leave it like that. One hundred and forty over eleven minutes. If you wanted to, you could take your handy dandy calculator and figure out what that is. I'd have been okay with that too. Giving me a decimal for this. Now, let's say finding that 140 was really, really hard, which it could have been. I don't know. It wasn't that easy for me. So you can always go with whatever these numbers are and say 20 times 35 can be my my common denominator and use that number. It just means that once you get that over there and you start doing this division, it's going to reduce down. When you use your least one, it won't reduce down anymore. So that's why I went with the least one because I knew we were going to get some big numbers and I wanted to make sure it was as small as possible. That's why I went with that one. Problem number four. It says, oh look, I went and figured it out. It's 12.73 minutes. Who knew? Did it already. Problem number four. Peggy can gather a bushel of apples in 45 minutes. Hold on. Peggy can gather it in 45 minutes. Peter can gather it in 75 minutes. Oh, another big number. How long will it take if Peggy and Peter to gather a bushel of apples if they work together? Okay, so I gotta find another LCD. This is really nine times five, and this is really 15 times five. So this is really three times three times five, and this is really five times five times three. So my LCD is gonna have to have two threes and two fives. which is 15 times 15, which is 225. Highlight them apples. Woof. So, over here to get from 45 to 225, we have to multiply times five. To get from 75 to 225, we have to multiply times three. I know because the five is what was missing down here from there, and the three is what was missing from right here from there. 
type stuff. Over here is times the 225. That means on top, I'm going to have the 5x. Aren't you glad I taught you this trick so you got these denominators no more? Plus the 3x is equal to the 225. Plus, since I'm doing these big numbers here, chances are in your homework, you're not going to have big numbers. So, 5x plus 3x is 8x equals 225. Divide both sides by 8. It automatically goes evenly, but if you, I mean, it, it doesn't go evenly because it's already all reduced. But if you go ahead and divide it in your calculator, you're going to get 28.125 minutes. There we go. For this section, just for the 810, I want your classwork, which is on page 356, to be numbers two. Hey, look, that was really nice. Numbers two and four. Two and four. Check that out. I mean, that was really nice. Homework. I'm not as nice in the other section, sorry. I need for that to be problems one and three. So there you go. I did the classwork for today already. It's on top of it, let me tell you. So now we're going to go to section 2.4. That is located on page 428. Back when we first started, I know it seems like it was so long ago. Back when we first started, we talked about how there was a code and as long as you knew the code, you were going to be okay with word problems. Well, today we're going to add to that code. Before we talked about how equals was the equal sign and how results is the equal sign and the word is is the equal sign. Now we got like whole phrases that need to have something. So when we see the word varies, that means equals K. Anytime we ever see that, we write equals K, okay? Whenever we see the word directly, just making sure they always do it. Yeah, <clears throat> that means times, just multiplication. Whenever we see the word inversely or indirectly, that means division, which you'll write as a fraction bar. That's it. Those are the only three things I need to introduce and you are now able to do everything in section 10.4 and 10.5. Do them all in one time. I'm just saying, it's fast. Okay, so let's look at some problems. We're gonna look at problem number 10 and number 12 on page 428. Problem number 10. I didn't say these were easy, but you can do it. It says Y, so I write down Y. Then it says varies, so I write down equals k. Then it says directly, so I write down my multiplication sign. And then it says with x, so I write down x. That's my equation. I have written down the equation. All the stuff they give me after that is just plugging stuff into the equation. Okay, so they say, y equals 3 when x is equal to 2. Okay, y equals 3 when x is equal to 2. 
So now we can find k. So the first thing I did was I wrote the equation. Plugged in my numbers. Then we need to find K. So I'm going to solve for K. If I want to get K by itself, I have to divide both sides by 2, because that's multiplied together. So when I divide both sides by 2, that'll make that go away, and I get 3 over 2 is equal to k. 1 and a half equal to k. Then, now that I know k, I can rewrite my equation. Using my new k. So now that I know this, I'm going to bring this down here and say y is equal to 3 over 2 times x. Okay, now that I've got this, I can look at the rest of the problem. It says find y when x is 34. x is 34. Whenever you have a whole number times a fraction, remember you multiply by the top and divide by the bottom. Doesn't matter which one you do first. Okay. I'm choosing to multiply by the top first. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. So that's going to give me 1 of 2 over 2. So y is equal to 51. Which means that step five was to plug in second information. Plug in my second numbers. And step six is to solve for the missing variable. Because when you plug in that second number, you're only going to be left with one variable. You just have to solve for whichever one it is. So they wanted us to find y when x was 34. So we plugged in our 34, and we got that y is equal to 51. Feel free to use a calculator. You know you can use calculator anytime you want. That will definitely make this go faster. So we did problem number 10. I want you to try problem number 12. First try just writing the equation to problem number 12. It says, number 12, N varies directly with M. N, because they said N, varies is equal K directly as multiplication with M. So I'll put my M there. Okay, We've written the equation. That was good. We're supposed to plug in our first numbers. It says n equals 84 with m equals 12. 84 with m is equal to 12. Now we're supposed to find k. So I need to divide both sides by 12, which means 7 is equal to k. That's a nice pretty number. Now we rewrite the equation. So from up here, I bring it down and I write n is equal to, instead of saying k, now I have my 7. So that's 7 times m. Now we plug in the second part. My second part says find n when m is 14.
And then we solve for the missing variable. 7 times 14. Ninety-eight. So n must be ninety-eight. I promise that's how you do it. So for this section, classwork. I told you we were going to get there. It's on page four twenty-eight. I want you to do number eleven for classwork. And then for homework, I want you to do numbers 9 and 13. Okay, one more section. Don't worry, you already got the notes for this section written down. They're all here, all around you. Your book separated the inversely and the directly into two different sections, but we've already done everything in this section. So I'm only gonna go over two problems, one of which you're gonna do by yourself, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give you the classwork and homework for that. But I'm gonna see this first. Okay, so I am looking on page 432. At number six. Number six says y varies indirectly as x. So I write y, my varies is still equals k. Indirectly, this time is a division sign or a fraction. I'm going to tell you to always write it as a fraction. I'll show you why in a second. Varies indirectly as x. So my x is what goes on the bottom. So y equals k divided by x. That's my equation. Now I go and I plug in my first numbers, which are y equals 8 when x is equal to 18. Now I have to solve it so because I have to figure out what k is. Remember we talked about when you have a fraction equal to a fraction, you can cross multiply and get rid of the stuff. So that's what this is, a fraction equal to a fraction. So that means I multiply 18 times 8, and that equals k times 1, or k. 18 times 8 is a big number. How do you calculate them? Probably do it in my head, just as fast as it takes me to punch all this stuff up. Calculator. 18 times 8, 144. So 144 is equal to my k. Now that we know what k is, I rewrite my equation. So I get y is equal to 144 over x. Now I get to plug in my second stuff. It says find y when x is 12. You know that one, right? So y has to equal 12. Just that quick, just that easy. The only difference is the way you write your equation. Everything else works the same. Let's have you try problem number 16. Switching colors because it really is section 10.5. Number 16 says L varies indirectly. L varies indirectly. Inversely indirectly gets that. With z squared. Woo! Z squared. If L equals 9 when Z is equal to 2. Two squared. Find Z when L is equal to 90. Okay, so now I've got to figure out what my K is. So 9 is equal to K over 4. 
going to do the fancy cross multiplying that gives me 36 is equal to k. That's not bad. Now I get to rewrite it. So L is equal to 36 over z squared. And they said they want me to find z when L is equal to 90. This time they gave me this number. So 90 is equal to 36 over z squared. Hmm. It's still a fraction equal to a fraction, so I can still do my cross multiplication thing. So I get 90 times z squared has to equal 36. Couple of ways you could go about this. If you really wanted to, you could subtract 36 from both sides, take out a GCF, etc., etc., etc. Do the difference two squares, yada yada, blah blah. It'll break down. Or you could go ahead and divide both sides by 90. I'm going to choose to do that. Trust that it's going to work out. When I do that, I get z squared is equal to 36 over 90. Let's see, 9 goes into both. 9 goes into 36 four times. 9 goes into 90 ten times. You really wanted it for 90? Okay, fine. I would have done 900, but that's just me. Okay, so 9 goes into 90 ten times. I can still reduce it even more. I could say z squared is equal to 2 over 5. Now I want to know what z is, so I have to take the square root of both sides. So I get that z is equal to the square root of 2 over 5. I don't know how I feel about that. Let's go about it the old fashioned way. Let's instead say we had 90z squared minus 36 is equal to 0. Take a 9 out. That leaves me with 10z squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So either 9 is equal to 0 or this thing is equal to 0. Back to my original thing. Since this isn't a perfect square, I can't say we're going to do that. That's what makes it all not pretty, just like it wasn't pretty over there. Okay, so you end up with 10z squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Because 9 can't be 0. So then we add 4 to both sides. Get 10z squared is equal to 4 divided by 10 divided by 10. We're ending up with z squared is equal to 4 over 10 again. We have another square root situation. And you get that z is equal to the square root of 2 over 5, again. Which I don't like. Either one of them. But, I bet if this had been a pretty number, you'd have been right there with it. So I'm saying you can still go ahead and do your homework and your classwork. The problem with this is you haven't seen square roots yet as far as they're concerned. I know you have, but as far as they're concerned, you haven't, so I don't like them giving them to you yet. That's just me. Okay, so classwork and homework. Classwork for this section is number nine, page 432. Homework for this section is numbers five and seven. 
do not forget to go back and do your homework from all three sections. You don't have classwork in all three, but you do have homework in all three. So make sure you get your homework done in all three sections. Be sure you study each kind of problem so that you'll be able to do it on the review and you'll be able to do it on the test. And I will see.